with the times that we're in, I wanted to make sure that we hit all of the resources that are available to you as students, faculty, and staff here at the college um, to make sure that you're taking care of yourselves and, uh, and not overworking or anything like that. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And then Jessica and Veronica are here and they can take it away. Let's see. Okay, y'all have the floor. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? Send a thumbs up or a hello in the chat. Um, thank you guys so much for joining in on the Leadership Summit this morning slash afternoon. Um, we appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to be here and learning about all the wonderful programs and things that we're doing here at PSC, but also learning about what we do as an, uh, an office um, and related to our wellness services. So um, going to the next slide here. Um, my name is Jessica Johnson, and I have the pleasure of serving as wellness case manager here at PSC. I've been at PSC for a total of five years. Um, I started my journey here at PSC as an AmeriCorps member, where I did volunteer management and financial literacy. And then I had the pleasure of coming in as a full-time staff member um, under our OVW grant, which addresses sexual assault and relationship violence prevention. And then I um, moved into my current position as case manager. Um, but in my kind of portfolio, I have a lot of nonprofit partnerships, uh, working with our on-campus and off-campus resources. And so all of those things and all those different experiences have helped me to um, essentially do what I'm doing in my job now. So, which is really important. And we'll talk more about what I do as a case manager, but having those outside resources and just that experience really does help to help us our, help our students navigate through um, the challenges and the things that they're going um, through during our time here. And then I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, Ms. Veronica. Good morning, everyone. I am Veronica Jennings. I am the project coordinator for sexual assault and relationship <laughs> violence prevention. I know that is a mouthful. So for <laughs> sure, I just say relationship violence prevention coordinator. And that's still kind of long. But <laughs> I've been at PSC for three years. Um, I first came to the college um, and got my first set of experience in academic advising, where I have met some of you all and some students that have gone on. Um, I have a background in crisis counseling, and I've also worked with students K through 12. Mm -hmm. All right. So for today, we are going to discuss current student issues at PSC, kind of give you an overview of what we've been seeing as a care team and just as an office in general. And then we're also going to share information on our different wellness resources. So for some of the current student issues that we've been seeing, obviously um, these issues have been highlighted significantly because of the COVID-19 pandemic. But um, what we're continuously seeing is this lack, lack of access to technology. For those of you that are unaware, um, we do have a laptop loan program where students are able to essentially check out a laptop for the semester, and that's summer, spring, or fall, and um, also hotspots for internet. And that was something that we didn't realize was such a need until we all went remote. Um, so we, we have that in place. We're also seeing a need for increased academic support. So a lot of our students are struggling with trying to um, balance between being synchronous and asynchronous. So being in the classroom live online versus doing um, more um, self-guided work. And so they're, they're having a, a hard time kind of struggling in between um, adjusting to the new formats of college, of, of the classwork, and then also um, trying to stick to, to what they're used to. Uh, also seeing an increase in financial need, very, very, very high need right now in just financial resources in general. Um, today as an institution, we have given out, oh gosh, it's been well over, um, 
$3 million or more um, just in financial support for our students through the CARES Act. Um, but even then, sometimes that's still not enough. So we've got students who are struggling with rent, utilities, even gas, um, transportation, food, um, you name it, it's a, there's some type of financial need there, which also brings us to our next, our next point, which is rising mental health concerns. So if we're not able to address those basic needs, then our mental health suffers as well. So luckily with the addition of a licensed counselor, on board, we do have the ability to bring mental health resources on campus. And then we have some off-campus resources as well that we'll talk about here shortly. But having that added piece, that full-time added piece really has helped our students a lot because the concern has um, gotten a lot um, more uh, heavy for our students in general. In addition to those, we have housing insecurity and food insecurity. Um, if any of you have been watching the news or listening to any just kind of conversations in general, um, the housing market right now is great for sellers, but terrible for renters um, or even those who are looking to buy at this time. So we have a lot of students who cannot afford rent or who are having to vacate their homes because their homes are being sold by their landlords, essentially, um, or their, their actual apartments are um, actually too expensive to afford right now. So uh, we have a lot of students who are unfortunately couch surfing um, or living in their cars or living with friends and family um, in, in conditions that are not always conducive to the proper nurturing environment that they need. And their food insecurity is a huge issue right now. Um, luckily for us, we have wonderful support from our faculty, staff, and our students who are providing food in donation form to our food pantries. And we do have food pantries on every PSC location. So having that has been a huge blessing for our students and it has definitely been a much utilized resource. Um, we had, almost 200 bags um, given out uh, by the end of February this semester, and then we stopped counting. So um, it's just a continued need, and it really does speak to the fact that our students are coming to PSC for help and they need support, but then they're also struggling through just kind of being involved in the classroom because they're hungry or they've got all these other issues compounded on top of them. And then of course, just general concern about health and safety. Um, one thing that COVID has done is reshaped a lot of our thinking on um, just safety and health in general. Um, so we have a lot of students who are concerned about their own public safety and, and their own health as it relates to not contracting COVID or, or spreading it. But then they also are dealing as caretakers for their other family members who are high risk and are you know, worried about you know, passing on the virus to someone else. And so we've seen over the past year, a lot of um, anxiety around that. And so we've been working with students through counseling and um, just in general conversations to kind of help alleviate some of those um, those anxieties behind that. You're muted, Veronica. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. And just to piggyback off what Jessica was saying, I think it is safe to say that last year had affected us all in some way. And honestly, when I think about it, I can't believe that it's been one year since the time that our lives completely, well, we completely transformed how we do day-to-day -day life. The school year at the college, the school year, the school wanted to take time to reach out to the student body because of this. And we wanted to see how everyone was doing. We wanted to answer the questions, how are our students feeling? What do they need the most? How can we help them? And where do we go from here? So because of this, we sent out three surveys this school year. And as you can see, the results were quite opening, eye-opening. The racial climate, it revealed a large spectrum of perspectives on race at the college, as we were all at home forced to witness the racial tension in this country. Our Healthy Mind survey revealed that over 80 
percent of our students' academic performance was impacted by the emotional, by emotional and mental difficulties. So being in the house and, and losing that face-to-face -face interaction really took a toll on our emotional and mental health. 59% of our respondents said they felt isolated for campus life. 55% of respondents had ex admitted to experiencing domestic violence in their life. 7% of our respondents, as you can see, experienced unwanted sexual contact within the last year. So because of the pandemic, we really lost the solace and the safety that campus life brings. A lot of times we don't think about that, that sometimes students come to campus just to escape life at home or things that they're going through at home. And being able to come to campus provides that safety. It provides that healthy interaction that we all need and find comfort in. And in our last survey, although we were happy to see in our relationship violence climate survey that 84% of our respondents felt safe on campus, and that's great, but we could not ignore the fact that 40% of our respondents have been victims to the crime of dating and domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking. And of the 40%, only three, 33, excuse me, of them had actually reported the incident. Um, next slide, please. So here's the approach that we took to the data findings and the current issues that our students face. We wanted to look at actionable items and what we could do to help everyone. So first we established our Pirates Cares team. The Pirates Cares team is a support team that consists of faculty and staff who come together weekly and address the needs of our students. And we connect them with the resources that they need to be, success, to be successful. Staff, faculty, and students can reach out to our team, to the Pirates Cares team, anytime via the PSC website, and we will have that information for you later on in the presentation. We also wanted to make sure that we were making a concerted effort to engage with our students and let them know that they have a community of care that sees them as a whole student. So we participate in calling campaigns and texting check-ins just to see how our students are doing and to assess any needs that they may have. We've also beefed up our training for our faculty and staff. With things like our gatekeeper training, we have currently have several faculty and staff trained to, keep, um, to teach this course, that's our suicide prevention, our mental health first aid. Um, we have partnered with victim service, we have partnered, created partnerships in the community, so we're all able to offer victim services resources. Mm -hmm. We have our Pirates Cares Team panels where we go out and we talk about what we do as a Pirate Cares Team and let you meet the members. Mm -hmm. We also have resource panels and shameless plug, you'll be able to meet some of our community partners next Thursday at 2.30 p.m. at our virtual community partner meet and greet. And here with that, and with that meeting, what we aim to do is allow students, faculty and staff to connect with our community partners and actually see what, our re what resources are available to you all and how you can access them. And of course, our referral system, we have a Maxian system that if you're having a concern or if you have a need, faculty, students and staff, they can go to the Maxient system and we will let you all know that as well, where you can find that as well. But you can go to that Maxient system and you can um, fill out a form and let us know if you have a student of concern um, or a student that may have a need, or if you have a need yourself, you can fill out that form The and one of our Pirates Cares team members will reach out to you. So here we just wanted to kind of show you what our different areas look like from a branding perspective. Um, if you've noticed any of our um, flyers around campus or on um, listservs and email or on Facebook, we now are branded. So what you're seeing here is kind of our main Pirates Care logo and then all of the different areas that kind of fall under Pirates Care. So we do offer suicide prevention in the form of gatekeeper training. So if you have gone through gatekeeper training, put something in the chat to let us know that you've done it and then encourage somebody else to do it as well. We've got some dates coming up here for the summer term um, that we're going to get out to the college wide to invite faculty, staff, and students to come on board for that. 
We also have our mental health awareness, which is one of our newer initiatives that we're going to talk about on the next slide, um, where you can learn more about referring students to our on-campus counselor and then all of some of our off-campus resources as well. And then we have sexual assault, stalking, and relationship violence prevention, which Ms. Veronica is the, the guru for, and she has done a wonderful job with kind of keeping that program going and, and, and giving it the life that it has today. And then we have the food pantry, which kind of is nestled underneath my responsibilities as case manager. And like I said before, we do have food pantries on all of our PSC campuses and centers. And finally, we have our academic integrity piece where we're not looking to punish students um, and, and just kind of throw them off to the side. We really want to try to educate them on why academic integrity is important, is necessary at the collegiate level, and what we can be doing to make sure that they're getting the best that they need out of their, their academic profiles while they're here. So for our mental health initiative, the picture you see here is Ms. Brittany Clark and Dr. Rudy is what we have affectionately called him. Brittany is our newest um, mental health counselor. We do, we, so in the side we have two because we are actually in the process of doing interviews for a new counselor, which will hopefully start very, very soon. Um, so having one counselor who's been here for about a year, and is very familiar with the campus and very familiar with our students' needs and then having an additional person to come in and kind of split the load between them two is going to be phenomenal. So right now, um, Brittany's caseload is actually pretty high considering that she's the only one counselor on campus. So being able to kind of split that in half and be a little more strategic in our approaches to mental health um, resources for our students is gonna be great. Um, Dr. Rudy is our in-house uh, <laughs> doc doctor. Um, and so he is actually a um, more or less a uh, facility dog. And so during counseling sessions, students have the option to sit with him. A lot of times they just wanna sit with him and you know get to Brittany later. And that's perfectly fine. Um, so if you've ever seen Rudy, you know, he's very sweet, very kind, he loves people people. Um, and he, you've probably seen him around campus. He's giving out treats all the time. And he also likes treats too. He loves carrots. So if you see him, get him a carrot. Um, Rudy is actually on the Pensacola campus. That's where he's housed, but they are a traveling act. So they will go to wherever they want, you know, you need to go see him at. So um, in addition to that, we do have training on suicide prevention, like I mentioned, and substance abuse, um, because what we're seeing uh, statistically is that our students are um, dealing with a significant amount of substance abuse just due to um, increased mental health needs. And then, of course, the pandemic kind of helped to exacerbate those those needs as well. So um, our Bay Care Student Assistant Program is our 24 hour, seven day a week um, counseling program where students can call and staff can call up to um, three times for free any day of the week, any time, um, especially during our out, our out of office hours. So we're in the office typically from 7.30 to 4. So um, if a student is in crisis and need to talk to someone, they can actually call the number, which will give you the resource for, and they can speak with the counselor. Um, and, and they can also um, request the, the different types of demographics or whatever, whatever makes them comfortable. So if, for example, Brittany is just one person um, and she's female, so maybe there's a student who wants to meet with a male identifying um, or a um, non-binary um, counselor. They can ask for that. There's also um, the, the desire if someone wants to maybe speak to someone of the same ethnicity as them, they can ask for that as well. So it definitely opens up a different world and more possibilities for our students um, because really what we want is to just introduce the mental health services to them and normalize the use of them. And then uh, let the students know that, you know, this isn't something that you, we're not gonna stigmatize mental health. Mental health is, is, mental, is wealth, is wellness. And so, you know, as all of us are struggling to some degree with some 
something, it really does help a lot to have that, that second pair of ears and eyes and also maybe another brain to kind of help you process through some things. Um, so we've seen a lot of improvement and in, in since we've had our counseling on campus, but I think we're going to definitely see an upsurge here soon once we kind of start to kind of flesh out more of um, the mental health initiatives that we have. I love that. And um, just to piggyback a little bit off what Jessica said, I like to think of mental health just like, just like we have physical health. And when you're not feeling well, you go see someone um, to help you assess what may be wrong and give you um, treatment. I like to think of mental health just like that. We all have a mental health and we're all working toward making sure that we are healthy. And that way, just like we would want to be healthy in our physical health. Uh, also with our relationship violence prevention initiatives, as we stated before, during the pandemic, um, on this campus and as the data um, showed, we saw a rise in dating and domestic violence. Um, and we saw a lot of students who had experienced this crime and did not report it. And that is do, students, were a, students who were once able to find some relief from a violent home life by coming to campus were now forced to stay at home with their abusers. So on our campus, we sought to implement these following initiatives. So in 2018, our campus was awarded a grant through the Office of Violence Against Women to reduce sexual assault, domestic violence, dating violence, and stalking on campus. Through this grant, we, were able, we are able to provide training for our incoming students on these crimes, as well as offer campus-wide prevention programming to our faculty, staff, and students at all of our campuses on these topics to include bystander intervention. Some of you all have all probably participated in our bystander intervention training, which is a wonderful program that we offer that gives you tips on how to engage in a way that suits your personality. So it's more, it kind of reminds you of if you see, say, see something, say something type of um, techniques, but it gives you tips and Tri tricks on how you can how you can get yourself involved in a way that best suits your personality. Some of us are more direct. Some of us are are not as quite direct, but you want to do something. In that training, we allow we give you tips on how you can be involved, because to stop these crimes and to prevent these crimes on campus, we all have to be involved. Also through our OVD. OVW campus grant, we've been able to establish partnerships with our local community agencies to provide resources that are related to domestic violence, sexual assault, and stalking to include shelter for domestic violence victims, various services for sexual assault victims, and even resources to help with the legalities of these crimes. As a commuter college, this was vitally important because as I stated before, our students often experience these or our students often experience these crimes and they don't report them. And oftentimes these crimes are committed off campus. So it's important that they are knowledgeable of the resources that's available to them. And so for our case management initiatives, this is my baby and I love all of these things. Um, so like I stated before, food pantry is one of our newest initiatives under case management and just having that resource available with no questions asked is uh, amazing. Um, so our students, all they need to do is once a semester come in, fill a very short application out um, just for demographic purposes and it's online as well. And once they complete that, they can get food for themselves and up to six people in their house. Um, and they can come at least twice a, twice a, a month and they can go as many times as they need to in the semester. So um, we've, we've kind of started to take out the stigma behind accessing resources, but especially food. And that's super important because we never want any of our students to feel like we're giving them charity, but that we're giving them resources to help them holistically and also to provide them with their basic needs. 
Um, you know, we we constantly talk about how PSC is a family. This is a community. And so if any member of our community or our family is suffering, then as a family, you know, as a community, we want to make sure that we're providing that support for whatever it is that they need. In addition to that, we have our personality and career assessments that um, we do occasionally for those students who are maybe having a hard time with kind of navigating through the college process, or maybe they've taken a career personality assessment with their, one of their academic advisors. And so they can come here to kind of get some deep dive um, resources. I'm always offering, you know, reading suggestions, books, whatever it is that I can give, just so that the students can kind of get more information out of what they either knew already or found to be new and true and different for them. Um, so we walk through those things. And then our community partnerships, um, like I mentioned before, when I walked into this position, I had community partnerships from outside of, of PSC for Escambia and Soda, Santa Rosa counties. And that's super important because the bulk of what I do is provide referrals and support. And so I have to know who's who, who's doing what, and how they're doing it, and how our students can access it, because we're also take, trying to take the, the stigma out of accessing uh, community resources. So um, because that can look very um, frustrating for the students, you know, you call this generic number, you might talk to someone, you might not, um, but having a actual referral system and actually having someone to talk to who's actually looking for a PSC student to call their resource and they can help them walk through it has really been helpful. So um, now that uh, some of the COVID restrictions are lifting and we're able to kind of be a little more um, mobile, we're going to increase those partnerships even more, um, which I'm very, very excited about. And then also bring them on campus as well. So my approach to case management, it comes from a holistic approach where we're focusing on eight pillars of wellness, um, which you see here, physical, nutritional, emotional, social, spiritual, intellectual, financial, and environmental. Um, and so really, these are things where I talk to students um, about just a general, what's in your toolbox already, and what do you kind of need additional support for? So um, for nutritional, are you getting enough food at home? Do you need access to our food pantry? Um, for physical, are you able to kind of get up and move around? Are you interested in intramural sports? Do you, you know, want to use a fitness center? Do you know that you can actually use a fitness center? You know, those are questions that I ask. For emotional and social, um, you know, who, who do you have on your team? Who's your cheerleaders? Who are your, what's your support system? Are you, you know, tapping into maybe mental health services? Um, do you have a therapist? Are you open to therapy? Those sorts of things. Spiritual, um, for some of our students, it looks very just kind of, you know, what are your, your, your values? What are your, your goals? What do you want out of life? What does that look like for you? Um, what keeps you grounded? Intellectual, um, are you, you know, being stimulated in the classroom? Are you bored? If you are, okay, well, then maybe we just take you back to, you know, your advisor. You guys can kind of talk through some different resources and some different um, alternative routes for you. Um, you know, empowering the student to advocate on, the, on their behalf is super important here. And then financial, um, do you have the basic needs that you that you need? Um, can you afford basic things? You know, are you in a position where you are um, making enough money to sustain yourself? And if you have a family, your family, super important. We have a lot of um, students in just our community overall who are um, job deficient, they're financial deficient. So they're making just barely enough to get by but they're not thriving. And so, um, you know, that special type of population where they may not qualify for governmental assistance, but they also are, are just barely making enough to get by. That's a very tough um, and vulnerable population because the help and the needs for them are just a little, they're the same as everyone else, but the actual resources available to them is very slim. 
And then environmental, um, what's your housing situation look like? Are you safe where you are? Is your neighborhood safe? You know, if you have children, do you feel like your children are in an, in an area, an environment that is conducive to their growth and their learning? So, um, you know, all of these pillars we're looking to see because these are things that if one is not as, as um, fulfilled as another, there, there, there are huge deficiencies that will show up in the classroom, they'll show up in their relationships, um, and they can be very, very difficult. Um, and so we're trying to balance to see, or really more so not even balance, I would say, I like to use harmony, because there's nothing that we do where everything gets 100%. There's some things that are going to be a little more um, for our attention, and there are going to be some things that are just a little less, just depending on the season that we're in. So, um, just kind of having that harmony is what is what we try to try to strive for. And then for occupational wellness, this is kind of something that we are starting to think more strategically about. Um, so, employment and career readiness. So, are you aware that we have a CTE program? Do you, you know, have you utilized the job skills that they they're offering, the interviewing skills that they're offering? You know, what does that look like? So, those are conversations that we're having because our students are graduating, but then they may not necessarily be ready for the real world or for a for a position, you know, working somewhere in a little more of a professional environment, um, or they are going on to a trade, and yet they're they all they've been doing for you know a year or two is just academic work. So, um, you know, we try to work with them to get them professional clothing, to get them connected to community resources that assist with that. Um, talking about, you know, the things to wear and what not to wear, um, just how to conduct yourselves in a, in a meeting business setting. So these are all things that really help to set the student up again for success. And um, additional, what I do in case management is partner with offices on campus. So um, I try to, you know, pop my head in and have relationships with financial aid, our TRIO programs, um, CTE, our wellness um, program, even though they're in our office, but still, that they, that's their own little baby. Um, I try to, you know, have relationships even with our public safety uh, office as well, because um, if there is a student in distress or there's a student that may need, you know, transport to Lakeview or whatever the case is, like I want to be able to, to assist in that way, but then also know, you know, that our public safety knows me and, and knows the, the, the situation so that we can give the student the best possible outcome. So um, partnerships, 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 that is kind of like the the, the center of the case management initiatives that we have. And that kind of helps make everything else that I do in case management flow a little bit better. I think this is you, Veronica. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so here's some important information we feel students, faculty, and staff should have. We want to encourage you to either take a picture of this slide or store some of this information in your devices. So the first bullet point is the information to our own campus counseling. Um, you can use this information to establish counseling services that would occur during office hours. So now our next two points and the last point um, are all services that can be utilized outside of our office hours. Again, we have BayCare. That is a resource that allows our students to have 24 hour access to counseling services. You can access this service by calling the number that is listed. The Together All platform is a company that we have re recently partnered with that also allows you to have 24-hour access to anonymous peer-to-peer -peer support. And through the support of the community, self-assessments, recommended resources, and a wide range of self-guided courses, students, faculty, and staff are able to safely express how you're feeling and have the tools that you need to get through any difficulties that you may be facing. You can access the Together All platform by going to the website, www.togetherall.com, and make sure that you register with your PSC email. 
And once again, as we talked before, we want you to know that you all have a community of support through our Pirates Cares team. We are ready and willing to listen and to connect you with any resources that you may need to be successful, not only in school, but outside of school as well, going back to those pillars of wellness that Jessica talked about. And of course, the crisis text line, again, is one of our 24-hour, um, seven-day-a-week services where they have trained crisis counselors who are ready to help you when you need it most. It is free, it is confidential, and you can access that by texting GULF to 741-741. And so you see here, we um, wanted to put our contact information on here. Um, Dr. Lestow's email is on here because she's also um, part of our, our show when we do this presentation, but she is actually out of the office for today. Um, but if you have any questions about any of the programs that we listed or just ways to get involved or additional support, um, feel free to give any of us an email. Um, you can also give a, a, a call. My um, office number is 484-2139. Um, but like I said, we are always here to help and we are always here to listen as well. So, um, you know, as you continue on for students, as you all are continuing on through your education and gaining those leadership skills, um, you know, you really want to make sure that your wellness is taken care of because that's going to help you be a much better leader. Um, and so we lead other people by leading ourselves first. So um, just want to put that nugget out there. And then for our uh, faculty and staff, we are here to support you. So um, please let us know anything that we can do to help you with your students in the classroom or just ones that you see um, in, in passing, um, we have a lot of frontline staff as well who see our students much more than we do. Um, when they come to us, it's usually by referral from you all. So um, if we can help in any way, please let us know. We'll be happy to sit and chat if we need to. Um, and if we do have time, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but I will defer to Ms. Bott for that. But thank you guys for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Jessica and Veronica. Those are so much needed resources. I'm, I'm sure, uh, I know I enjoy knowing all of those details and all of that good stuff. Um, so really thank you so much. And if you ever, got, if you, any of you guys ever need any resources, feel free to reach out to me and I can refer you to them or reach out to them directly. <laughs>